So, the post-apocalyptic genre is obviously pretty huge. Like, it's, it's huge to the point where it's not even really a genre anymore, so much as just a thing that often happens in all sorts of stories. Humans have been imagining end-of-the-world scenarios basically forever. Like, you go back to ancient Sumeria and Babylon and stuff, they had old myths about the end of the world. And the reason for this is probably because there's been so many big disasters for as long as humans have been around. You know, at some point, a comet hit the Earth and killed all, all of humanity except for 10,000 people. Or uh, at other points, there have been, you know, massive floods and earthquakes and storms and droughts and just things that made people think that the gods were angry with them for whatever reason, and so they just told stories about it. And that's been going on forever, and it's been, you know, populari popularized and refined in the modern day, and I don't know, I kind of just wanted to talk about it, so here's uh, all the different types of apocalypses. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Now, when I say apocalypse here, I mean just the end of civilization. I, d I don't necessarily mean, like, the end of planet Earth or the end of all of humanity. I just mean the end of human civilization as we know it and the death of a whole bunch of people. And so it, it brings us back to a more primitive state, let's say. And this sort of thing has happened in real life. You know, after the plague wiped out most of the American Indians, they were left kind of like that. You know, a bunch of their civilizations fell and those left were basically just nomadic hunter-gatherers and then they got conquered and shit. Uh, the Bronze Age Collapse is another pretty good example. They did eventually get back on their feet, but everything fell apart for a couple hundred years. Or uh, the fall of the Western Roman Empire. You know, like, these sorts of things have happened before. So when I say apocalypse, that's basically what I'm talking about. Uh, only in stories it's usually most of the world, if not the entire world, falls into disrepair like that. So you can broadly split these into three categories. Category one is natural you know, some sort of natural cause to the apocalypse. And basically that just means humans didn't cause it, and in many cases humans may try to stop it, but they're unable to do anything about it. So there's a couple different types of this. Uh, a pretty popular one for a while was asteroids. You know, like we had Deep Impact and Armageddon were both movies about astronauts trying to redirect a big asteroid before it hit the Earth and killed most everybody. Uh, and then Remnants is a book series about people leaving the Earth to go colonize somewhere else before the asteroid comes and kills everybody. You know, that's something that maybe hasn't happened in, like, recent memory, in recent history, but the possibility is there. Like, every few years, there's some sensationalist news story about how, oh, there's a big asteroid that NASA just found, and it might come and hit the Earth at some point, who knows? Like, that, that, that happens every couple of years, so... I guess it's just a thing that people default to when they don't really know a better cause for the apocalypse. Uh, volcanoes is another one, which is less common, unfortunately, because I think it introduces some interesting possibilities, but, you know, it's not very common. And it's almost always the Yellowstone supervolcano, too. Uh, this would be stuff like Ashfall, which I did a review of the first book of a long time ago, uh, or Supervolcano, which I also did a review of the first book in that series a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, this, this one also is just a thing that is in the back of a lot of people's minds, but you don't see it used very often. And then there's, of course, just something happens that makes life on Earth impossible, or at least human life on Earth impossible. Like, uh, Interstellar, uh, for good or ill, I really like that movie, a lot of people don't. Uh, that one is about a blight that is killing off most of the world's plant life, uh, particularly the crops that people eat, you know? So... Soon enough, humanity will not only starve to death, but the blight is also apparently sucking the oxygen out of the air, and so uh, there will be none left for people to breathe. They'll all suffocate. So, basically, what I'm getting at is natural apocalypses, that's usually just like, yeah, shit happens, bro. You know, there's... Sometimes life just fucks you, and you gotta deal with it. Like, a lot of these ones are about preventing the apocalypse, or at least escaping the apocalypse, maybe, uh, but very few of them take place afterwards. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but, you know, that's that's just what they're like. The second type of apocalypse would be man-made. You know, this one would be, it's the fault of humans. And this, this category has a lot more variety, usually, because there's a bunch of different types. There is war, and 
nuclear war is the most common one. You know, people finally launch the missiles, they kill most humans in the initial blast, and then radiation kills a bunch more, and then uh, the dust and fallout causes a global cooling trend, and there's nuclear winter, which kills off a bunch of people, and just life sucks for a long time. Sometimes, if you want to be more cartoony with it, then you might have, like, mutated animals and stuff as well, which are also a threat uh, after the bombs drop, but not always. Uh, but then there's other types of war that are sometimes used as well, which is why I lumped them together. Like, occasionally you'll see biological war, which is where something goes out and, like, you know, chemicals or whatever just poisons the earth, makes it so that uh, plants and animals can't live, and then the humans usually die out not long after. So stuff that does this would be, like, the Fallout games, Metro 2033, or the Blade Runner series, uh, both the book and the movies, which are fairly different from one another. And then there is a plague, you know, just some sort of plague comes out, usually a super flu for whatever reason, and it just spreads around and it kills the vast majority of the human population before anyone can really figure out what to do with it. And usually, usually in this one, there are people who survive, but it's because they're immune. You know, it, it never shows people who survive because they hold themselves up on an island and didn't let the infection through. Uh, it never shows people who survived because someone managed to make a vaccine before everything fell apart, but they were only able to distribute it to a certain number of people beforehand. Like, that that never happens for whatever reason. It's always just a small number of people won the lottery. I'm not, I'm not sure why, but, you know, examples of this would be stuff like The Stand, 12 Monkeys, or The Last Man. And when I say The Last Man, I mean the Mary Shelley story, The Last Man. I'm not talking about the comic series Why The Last Man. Now... The plague can be natural, but it pretty much never is. Like, usually it's a man-made virus which gets out. And, you know, it's always a virus, too. It's never, like, bacteria or anything for whatever reason. But, uh, yeah, the, it's pretty much always man-made, and it gets out and kills everybody somehow. And, honestly, I'm really interested to see how this one will change in the coming years. Because, obviously, we're kind of in the midst of a giant pandemic at the moment, which is kill millions of people, and even beyond that has left a bunch of other people with, like, damage to their lungs and such, and I don't, I don't know, that's a separate discussion, but I am interested in seeing how this will change in the future, because, I mean, now we've seen how people will react to this sort of thing, so there's probably going to have to be, uh, in future stories about this, there's going to have to be a large group of people who will just actively do the stupidest shit they possibly can, and... I don't know, I'm just, I'm curious to see how this will change, because I don't have any great ideas for where to take this after, you know, people have already lived through it and they might not find the fictional version interesting, but I don't know, I'm, I'm curious. Then, of course, there's zombies. Don't think I need to explain this one in the slightest, you know? Something causes humans to become mindless, undead, killing machines which just want to go out and eat other humans, or sometimes specifically just eat their brains. And if you get bitten, or sometimes there's other ways of transmitting the infection as well, you become one of them. So this would be stuff like uh, Rotten Ruin, The Last of Us, 28 Days Later, The Walking Dead, Dead Rising. There's a lot of zombie stuff. <laughs> okay. And uh, this one has some variety. And depending on how a Patreon poll goes, I might do a video just about all the different types of zombies and how that works. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but... You know, there's fast zombies and slow zombies, there's the undead ones where you have to get them in the head versus the technically alive ones, uh, where you don't have to get them in the head, They're, you know, you can shoot them in the heart and they'll still die. Um, there's the virus, which is the most common way of spreading it, but in other cases, like uh, The Last of Us, it's a fungus, or uh, Back for Blood, which I haven't played, but I believe in that one, it's a parasite, like, you know, there's, there's some variety here. And this one is very, very similar to the plague in that, you know, it kills off most of the population and there may or may not be a small number of people who are immune, uh, but, you know, it kills most everybody and then everything breaks down from there. Uh, but the main difference is that you get to be a badass. You know, when, when a plague victim dies, it, that's just kind of sad and you have to bury their body or something. But when a zombie victim dies, they will come and try to kill you, so you have to kill them. And so, obviously, the only people who are survive would be the crazy badasses who can fight real good. I mean, that's not how it would work in real life, but that's how it's treated a lot of the time. And you don't even have to feel bad about killing them, because 
again, they're undead machines. You know, they, they don't feel pain or, or anything. And if you don't put them down, then they're going to kill some people. Then there's climate change. <laughs> Uh, this, this is going to be controversial. So this is stuff like The Day After Tomorrow, Brink, or To an Extent, 2012, which is a an underrated movie. I'm not going to get into detail, but I think it's underrated. And this one is basically, you know, the world, humans pump too much CO2 into the atmosphere, it gets hotter on average, but then that also causes, like, the occasional cold snap in some areas, it causes storms to get much bigger, it causes drought, starvation, wildfires... You know, just crazy things like that, and eventually that leads to the breakdown of civilization. And uh, this one, I think this one is starting to become much more common, just because even though we've been getting warned for decades that this sort of thing will happen, it's starting, its effects are becoming much more visible now. So, yeah, I don't have much else to add there, but that is a type. Now, unlike with natural apocalypses, which I think are just the ones people throw in when they feel like having an apocalypse story and don't want to think about it too much. Man-made ones seem to become more or less popular based on the fears of the time. You know, like, back in the 50s and 60s, people were super afraid of nuclear war, and it's taken several generations of living with that sort of Damocles over our heads before we just decided, eh, maybe I'll burn a nuclear fire tomorrow, I don't know, it's just, yeah, whatever. Like, we, we just don't care anymore. Uh, and then the plague and climate change stuff are what people are worried about now, which is why those are becoming a bit more common than they used to. And I think, again, climate change is going to pick up a lot in the coming years. I mean, stories about the climate change apocalypse, when I say that, is going to pick up a lot in the coming years. And hell, maybe as people become more afraid of being replaced by automation, we might start getting more like robot uprising stories. You know, like the Terminator or something? I mean, maybe that'll become more popular as more people lose their jobs. I, I don't know. We'll see. And the final category of apocalypse is supernatural apocalypse. And I'm defining this as basically just the world is ended by anything that is just not real. So, you know, we have aliens is a big one. So this would be stuff like Falling Skies, Independence Day, Battlefield Earth, you know. And that's pretty simple. A race from another planet, usually another planet, occasionally they'll do something weird like another dimension, but whatever the case, another race comes in way more technologically advanced than humanity and kills everyone. Now, this one is rarely done as an apocalypse. It's pretty much always done as an invasion story, like again, Independence Day and Falling Skies. It's just the aliens come in and they start killing people, but it's about how awesome the humans are for fighting back, as opposed to something like Battlefield Earth, which is a terrible book. You can watch me talk about it if you want. Uh, but that that one, at least, was more realistic in that everyone fucking died, <laughs> except for a very small number of humans, and their civilization was just gone. And, well, say what you will about that book. It is It, it has an interesting setup. But, you know, that's at least an apocalypse about aliens. Then we have an apocalypse caused by God, or multiple gods, uh, this would be stuff like Angel Fall, the South Park movie, just pretty much every old myth. <laughs> like I was saying at the beginning, like a bunch of old myths were about the world getting destroyed and it was pretty much always by God or gods. You know, like the biblical flood or Ragnarok, just the things like that. It was pretty much always people just saying, well, God hates us, it's, uh, it's our own fault, I guess. And this one, th this one's not as common anymore. I think it's just because the modern world is a lot less religious than it used to be, and even for people who are somewhat religious, they tend to live in countries with secular institutions, so, eh, I don't know, it's just not that common anymore, but it does exist, you know? Sometimes you will have stories about, like, the legions of hell marching out onto Earth and taking everything over, which, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't see that very often. It is, it is interesting. Uh, occasionally, you'll just have magic in the world. You know, like, something will happen which either brings magic into the world or brings it back into the world and then everything falls apart or is turned on its head. Like Shadowrun, I know, is more about it being turned on its head than the world ending in an apocalypse, but either way, it's about magic coming out and destroying a bunch of stuff. And then uh, the Shinora Chronicles, I believe, is also like that. Like, magic just came and I guess that ended the world. <laughs> I don't know. I, I never read the books. I, I did see the TV show, which... Okay, it's not a great show, but it did have this scene. So it's forever custom to jump into bed with every guy you meet. 
Honestly? It's not just guys. What? Afraid you'll like it. So that's what Ophelia has been up to ever since her dad killed her. Okay, that, that, that makes sense now. Okay, but the point is, sometimes magic just ends the world, and those are usually more of when people want to do a post-apocalyptic story, but they also want it to be a fantasy story. And they decided to combine the two for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not, I'm, it, it seems a little weird now that I'm thinking about it, but whatever, I have no issues with it. And finally, there's just the unexplained apocalypse. You know, like, something happened which destroyed everything, wrecked civilization, and we never really find out what it was, or we never really find out the cause of it. So this would be stuff like, why the last man? You know, we never find out exactly what killed all the men, but it's it, that's what happened, and that's what changed the world around. Uh, there's the Hunger Games, which... They give some vague hints about, like, there was some sort of warfare, and there was climate change and stuff, but at the end of the day, we just never learn that much about what happened. All we know is that the world ended, and this is the remnants of it, and this civilization sucks now. And then there's, like, the road, which is where nature basically just died, like, all of it, and we have no idea why or what happened. All we know is that humanity is probably going to go extinct soon. The thing about apocalypse stories is that they're too broad. You know, I can't really draw any sort of overall message from them. Maybe someone else can, but I'm not going to. I don't really feel like it. Uh, none of them really seem to be about the apocalypse, though. Like, a lot of them are about stopping it. You know, like, oh, we have to stop the villain from launching the missile, otherwise other missiles are going to launch and then the whole world ends, like that sort of thing. Uh, or they're about, like, the world adapting to it. You know, uh, The Walking Dead ends with society adapting to zombies. You know, like, that's basically how the comic ends, is zombies are still around, and they're still a danger, but for the most part, humans have learned how to deal with them, and they're starting to rebuild. You know, they're building cities and uh, infrastructure, settlements, all that sort of stuff. The day after tomorrow ends with, like, okay, well, the climate has changed now, and a bunch of people died in the first like, real outbreak of this weird storm, which doesn't make any sense because Roland Emmerich is a fucking hack, but let's, let's not, let's not get into that. Um, it, a bunch of people died in that, but a lot of people are still left, and it's like, okay, what now? Like, the world has changed, how are we gonna work with this moving forward? And then, this is also partially why so many apocalypse stories happen, like, generations or centuries after the events themselves. You know, it's more about the way society changed and the new civilizations that emerged after this one died, and that's what it's about, which is kind of fascinating to think about, I'll admit. Like, you know, Rome collapsed, I brought that up earlier, and it brought up medieval Western Europe, which was its own unique society and pretty interesting in its own right. So, when our civilization collapses, who knows what'll come out of it, but it, it is interesting to think about and speculate. I will say, though, that apocalyptic stuff, post-apocalyptic stuff, it's a... it, it is pretty wish fulfillment -y. Wish fulfillment -y. That's a That's a term now. I'm, I'm just making that up. It, we, we all kind of wonder what we would do if the government collapsed and if civilization was gone. Like, we, we've pretty much all wondered that sometimes. You know, and in fact, some people specifically think that they're being held back by society and that they would actually get to be the winners and they get to rule everything if it weren't for whatever the hell we have now, which is stupid, but you know, a, a lot of us have wondered like, okay, if a zombie outbreak happened in my city, how would I survive? Uh, like hell, that's why the zombie survival guide was a best-selling book, because one, it was funny, and two, people just want to think about that sort of thing and they want to fantasize about it. Or uh, what if I was in the stand and I was one of the few immune people left, like, how would I deal with that? Would I just try and strike it out on my own? Would I try and start a community? Like, you know, people want to think about this. People want to fantasize about it, and pretty much always they're going to fantasize about being one of the good ones, you know, one of the good survivors who is not only a decent person, but is also successful. And uh, at the end of the day, you just, you never really know how you'd react. And uh, I don't think I have anything else to add to that. I Like I said, I didn't want to draw any major big conclusions about 
this genre, genre, I don't know if you could really call it that, but I didn't want to draw any major big conclusions about it, I kind of just wanted to talk about it and talk about the different types, so that's all. I'll see you later. A huge thanks to everyone who bothered to watch this far for whatever reason. I don't know who would want to listen to me talk for half an hour. But especially a huge thanks to all my patrons whose names are on here, including the $10 and up patrons, Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Christopher Quinton, Dan Antsilijovic, Echo, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Microphone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and of course, as always, Vevictus. Y'all are the best, really. Let me let me tell you that. Like, if you were here, I I'd kiss you. I wouldn't actually kiss you, but you know, you're you're all pretty cool, anyways. So uh, just don't don't take my just, um. Okay, yeah. Goodbye.